Gene, it's been a long time coming, but we're gonna finally do that video. We're about to jump into how to shade and add value to clothing. All right guys, today we're talking about shading clothing and shading fabric, um, adding value to fabric. We're gonna talk black and white. If you guys want color, you can let me know, but we're gonna save that one for another video because I do still have some color theory stuff I'd like to talk about first. Now, I don't want this to be too much about talking about the study of it and this and that. I really just kind of want to get straight to the drawing, but we should have a little discussion about what we're looking at. So when it comes to fabrics, we got many different fabrics. We got silk, we got some sort of like tablecloth, we got, um, any sort of like, I don't know, like a beach towel, whatever this is. And we have to understand that when you take a closer look at it, especially it's all gonna reflect and shade differently. It might be more matte, it might be more shiny, um, whatever it is we're looking at. We're gonna take a general look today, but we can always dive further into different materials little by little. But really, you should be able to kind of get the idea from the general talk. So understanding how do you shade something, anything, this case we're talking about clothing you need to understand the shapes that it's made up of because understanding these basic shapes and then applying it to something more advanced is how you can piece things together like a puzzle and make it look believable so if we throw some value on this you guys can see i did this quick and dirty but it is still believable because it's capturing the essence of what the shade and the highlight is and again, that's really all it is. You're going to have a shape that's gonna have some sort of dimension to it, right? This goes from the front. It has a backside that we don't see. It's in 3D space. It's gonna be capturing a highlight. It's gonna have a core shadow that lets you know this is where the light stops existing and it starts to go around the other edge. And then you're gonna have everything kind of like in between the fading shadow. You're gonna see, you know, like sometimes cast shadow and stuff like that. If there's another object, that cast shadow is gonna be put onto that other object, et cetera, et cetera. So when we talk about fabric and clothes and folds, the cylinder and the cone are gonna be the two basic shapes that you see the most. Primarily, you're gonna be seeing them in some sort of perspective. So kind of keep that in mind. There's gonna be some distortion going on and that's perfectly fine. We're gonna use that to our advantage. All right, so last thing before we get to those drawings is again, I just wanna make this about process in this video. This is a simple drapery study. You guys should be able to see, you know, you can see the cone shape in here. If you kind of cut it off, you can see some of those cylinder shapes going on, right? So we should be able to understand what I'm talking about when I say shapes. Now, if you guys have never hung one of these up on your own or done one of these in a classroom where you had to grab one of these pads and one of these charcoal pencils, and one of these eraser things, and then your hands end up looking like this because you're smudging and trying to create these perfect gradients and all this stuff. I gotta be honest, you have to do it. If you want to understand value and how to shade things and really learn to break these things down, this is going to be your first and basic step, but I know it's not what you guys wanna see. You guys wanna see this applied to some real world examples. So let's do those. So in this video, we're gonna cover jeans and we're gonna cover a dress. So there you guys go, you have it plain and simple. You can skip to whichever one you need for future reference. All right, guys, so after making this video, it became very obvious to me that we're gonna need more than one video for this. I did spend a lot of time on the jeans and we wanna take our time being realistic, so. Let's jump into that. There'll be another one for the dress. Now, obviously these are some baggy jeans, but I wanted that because we have a nice fold structure. We're not gonna draw the whole thing here. I'm not drawing a whole figure. I'm just gonna zoom in on an element here. All right, guys, so the rest of this video is literally just gonna be about shading and drawing these jeans. Just a section that I have squared off here. So make sure you got your supplies ready for this. You could use graphite, charcoal, paints, pastels, whatever you want, just, you know, if you're sticking with me, keep it grayscale. If you want to do color, do color. You know, whatever you want to do. Now, you guys can see me kind of zooming through this. I did speed this up. This isn't going to be a video about how do you draw clothes on the figure. Um, I happen to have done a whole series on that. So if you want to check that out, go check that out. Um, you can watch any of that. If you guys have drawings from that, you can now apply some of this tone and shade techniques to that. You don't have to draw this exact thing. So maybe go ahead and grab that or just pause the video and draw in this section of the leg and then unpause when you caught up to me. Now going into it a little bit, you guys can see, um, you know, let's just talk some basic things. I threw, I drew two cylinders under there to understand the kind of leg shape. And then I draped some denim on top of it. Now we need to remember with denim, it's a pretty thick um, kind of bulky material. It doesn't bend 
as easily as like a really thin fabric, right? It's a pretty dense material. It's made for people that used to work in like, um, you know, like out in rural areas. It was kind of like a tent material. So like they fashioned it into pants and it's still a thick kind of working material. Um, so now I like this one because it's a little bit baggy. So what I'm doing is I'm going in here. If you guys remember the type of folds, we're looking at some zigzag folds here. And this is created when you wear a pair of jeans for a while and they kind of have this memory of where they're bent. And then when you're standing, when you're sitting, they kind of compress into this like accordion shape. So I'm going in and I'm drawing all these pockets. I'm trying to stay as accurate as possible, but don't overstress this part. If you can't get the accuracy, don't worry, you know, just kind of get a general understanding. Now from here, guys, this is going to be the setup for literally the rest of what we're doing. We're jumping into value now and you're going to throw a tone over your whole drawing. You can do it on your whole sheet if you want. You can see I didn't stay inside the lines. We're not gonna keep the lines. This is gonna be about a deep detailed value study. So we're not keeping our line work. So make sure you drew that nice and light or if you didn't, if you drew it dark, go ahead in with an eraser right now and lift some of that out so that way the line work is nice and light. Uh, if you do it with charcoal, don't worry, because you can always just kind of smear any line work out that you don't want. So, okay, now we have our initial tone. Why do we put a tone down? Because blue jeans are not white. Even white clothes is not going to appear as white. Nothing's going to appear like this background white that I have on my screen, because we live in a world with colors and shades and different lighting. So... All that stuff is always reflected in our clothes. Here we have blue denim, and that's gonna be a pretty deep, dark color. So we start with a tone. Now I'm going in with a nice dark value, and I'm filling in each pocket where I see shade. Now remember, just like when we talk about our shapes, there's places where light exists, and there's places where light can't reach. So when you have a fold compressing, that pocket where you could stick your finger into, is not going to see as much light as the part that comes out that cylinder shape we're talking about right the cone shape so that's what we're seeing here we're seeing pockets of shadow pockets of light so i like to work dark to light um, this is generally just something i do because i i have a tendency to be shy with my values and stuff like that so i don't ever push myself dark enough um, I don't know what that is. It's just kind of something that I've uh, worked on ever since art school. Um, and yeah, but so I go in, I kind of confidently put in like a darker shade than I think I should put in um, just because I know technically I'm going to put down something too light. So I'm going to just immediately jump in with something dark. Now, after I got my dark, dark um, pockets, I'm going to go into my slightly lighter pockets. And we're going to start filling it in. This part kind of comes down to you and your eye. And this is where you kind of have to train your own eye to see this stuff because I can tell you what I'm seeing, but you might see things a little differently and that's perfectly okay. We have to develop these things on our own. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide there's a lot more than just one shadow value, right? There's different ranges of value in here and you need to decide where you see the darker and where you see the lighter and then start making these choices about filling certain things in. So even though I laid down an initial tone in the beginning, I could still come in and darken it and lighten it and whatever I want to do, it doesn't mean it's set in stone and never, never set yourself in stone when you're doing value studies. Always have the ability and the open mind that you're going to want to go darker. You might want to lift out. So, you know, have an eraser nearby or something that you can lift out value with um, or a gel pen or whatever you need. Um, to be able to add some white later, but let's try to stick with the reason I stayed with that light tone first is because I can keep pushing and pushing and pushing darker, but most materials you work with, you won't be able to lift out darkness, right? So we want to work from our lightness to our darkness and then have putting lightness back in there as a last resort. And you guys can see I'm going in, I'm adding some darker value. I didn't, that tone that we initially laid down was a little too light. It actually works really well as a highlight color, but 
that I don't have that much highlight color on these jeans. You know, there is a nice light source coming through, but I really want to save that nice kind of stark highlight for that zigzag pattern that goes through all those little um, ridges of the folds there, right? So you guys can see I'm testing, if you're working digitally, obviously you can't do this if you're working traditionally, I'm testing turning on and off my line work. Um, Cause again, at the end of the day, we don't wanna be reliant on a linear um, line work drawing when we're talking values. The values should be able to hold the shape together all on their own, okay? So if you're working digitally, on and off, keep, keep checking it, making sure it's working. Um, don't get stuck to the line work. If you're working with traditional, make sure you're blending out some of that line work along the way. Now you can see, look, I already talked about how I'm too shy with my values and now I'm going in and I'm punching them even further in darker. Um, reason I'm doing this too is because I really want to emphasize that this is a pocket and it's a deep pocket. And so now I'm gonna go in and kind of find everywhere that deserves a little bit of a darker tone. And what you're gonna notice is this is gonna really push these pockets away. And then everything that's light is gonna come further. It's, it's all an illusion. Drawing is always an illusion of like um, creating form, creating depth, creating 3D space. So all I'm doing is kind of using my magic tools here and we are building on this illusion. So. Again, now I'm just kind of finding my darker pockets um, and areas that I don't want to stick out as much. Remember, when we're talking value, we're also talking contrast. And when we're talking contrast, that means things are competing with each other. And as an artist, you want to be the one making the choices of what you want people to be looking at and what you want people to be noticing. So here, I know that this little section I'm working on is a little bit lighter than the dark pockets, but I'm gonna go in and make it dark anyways, maybe even darker than it might appear on the picture because I am again dealing with contrasting shapes, contrasting values, and I wanna make sure that this isn't the section you're necessarily looking at. I want this to read as a shadow, and I want your eyes to be drawn to the pocket of light that is next to it. And so I'm gonna play up that contrast. So this being said, again, I just wanna overemphasize this fact. You have complete creative control here and you do not have to get stuck to the reference, okay? Um, when you're learning, I do definitely suggest that you stick as close to the reference as you probably can because that's gonna be your starting point. It's gonna be your information. Um, once you start getting comfortable with this subject though, then you can start to push things. Um, you know, like if I wanted to, if I wasn't following my reference here, I can make it baggier. I can make it um, skin tight, right? Or I can give them skinny jeans, but use this information because I like this pose and use the shadow information and then apply that, right? So that's what we're kind of learning here, right? You want to always take these things as a step. All right. So. We're going in, we're just kind of like, again, I'm adjusting, I'm pushing in, I'm pulling out, lifting values, adding darker values. A lot of what I'm doing, if you guys are working digitally, is I'm just color picking. Um, so you guys can see, I'm just like, um, whenever you see like that little flash of a circle right there, I'm color selecting something and then kind of pushing it back in. I work with like a um, opacity control, so it's my the how much pressure I put is how much of the value it puts down, right? So lower opacity or more. Um, so from that's something that helps me to kind of create like a, a depth and value. And also I just kind of like the, uh, a little more rough texture that it applies to things. That's something that's drawn out to me. If you guys like smoother texture, um, you know, whether you're working traditionally or, or digitally, there's always blending tools and things like that. All right, so here we're just kind of coming in and now I, I have my shapes pretty much defined. I spent a lot of time at the top half there, so probably gonna come down and revisit some of that bottom half. But again, <clears throat> coming in and defining some of my pockets. Now, you can see that these two pockets at the bottom, they're not as dark as 
those ones at the, the, the like I guess like the halfway point, right? That I, I ended up going in and defining. So I'm gonna darken them and I might get close to that value, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna try my best not to get too too dark with them. Now this one I'm I'm shading in here. Um, it definitely is pretty dark, so I can kind of give myself some leniency with that, but the one below it, um, it's not such a deep pocket. So we want to kind of be careful of how far we push it. Once I give the information of those middle folds where I show that that darkness means that those folds go that deep, that becomes like the information that your viewer is grabbing from. So if I then add that dark value to another pocket, it's telling them that that value or that pocket, um, it goes in that deep uh, because we they're kind of just comparing and contrasting, right? So just be like, you know, aware of what values you're putting down. What do you want to tell? Always remember that some folds go in further, some, some are a little more shallow, right? So um, add that complexity to it. It really kind of adds to the detail work and the structure of what you're creating here. All right, so now we're kind of going down towards the bottom. I didn't really want to make this about, you know, too much of the pants. Um, originally, my intention was to actually just make it about, you know, the back side of the knee there. But <clears throat> I mean, if you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that I get stuck on details. And this is no different. Here I am stuck on details. So I did add this part in too. <clears throat> I felt like we were already kind of zoned in to just this section of pants anyway, so why not? All right, so we're just adding in some little details that we can see here. If you wanna create those little folds again, it's really just gonna be a little bit of darkness and then you throw a little bit of lightness on top of it and you kind of created yourself like an easy cheated fold there. If you guys can kind of see on the left side, that little fold that I created. Um, right along the left side of the calf there. It just says like a crease or something in the jeans. So here I am, I'm just pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. This is where, you know, if you're working traditional, you're adding some white value or some dark and you're kind of just, you know, you're pushing a little bit here and there, maybe like a little dab of black or a little dab of white. Um, or if you ha already have on your palette, like a dark gray or a light gray, um, this is where you're erasing, maybe adding back in with graphite or charcoal. And we're just trying to kind of convey that illusion again. So once you kind of see that thing happen, then you can kind of either, you know, where do you go? Do you fall back? Do you keep pushing? So you can see here, I created a nice soft pocket where it folds, but then there's a hard shape where it catches the light because the light is now hitting that part that is poking out um, versus the part that's going in. So right there on the top right section, you can see. Um, and now it didn't go as deep and dark as the, uh, the, you know, the darker pockets that we did in the middle. So again, you know, I'm trying to convey different levels of value, different shadow types, you know, how dark, how light. All right, so we're gonna work on this big pocket here. So now you guys can see, it's getting a little bit of that shadow on the bottom uh, because this is a nice big kind of scoop of like, right? This is like a half circle almost being like chopped out of these pants. So we're kind of adding that in and then we're gonna go in and add in some of that darker value to the top section of it to kind of push it out a little bit. Now it's always a game of back and forth and wherever you are ready to push yourself. You can see there's no formula for it. Again, I like to start dark to light, but once the game starts going, it's really just like wherever you are drawn to. Um, you guys can see me like I work in one pocket and then all of a sudden I'm down to the bottom and like here I am adding some, some highlighted values back in my picture or my drawing here. So 
you know, it's it's a game of back and forth and like making sure you don't lose your values too much. So you might not be able to see it because I'm working with a really small tool, but I'm just kind of following my zigzag now and I'm re-adding a little bit of that highlighted information. And again, this is like, this is gonna kind of reaffirm to me like, well, um, what else do I want to be this light and what else do, and what do I want to darken now to make sure that that light appears light? Right, because everything contrasts, everything plays off of each other. So if I have other things in my picture that are that light, well, it's not going to seem like a prominent highlight um, because there's too much of it going on. Highlights are the brightest point in your picture. So we want to kind of keep that idea and keep that focus. So you guys can see I'm working a little bit smaller with my tool here. Now I'm coming in and kind of adding some more detail as well. And there you go. So I'm adding that darker value to the bottom because again, I really want to emphasize that zigzag coming down the pants and then it kind of like opens into the leg down there, right? Right like after the knee finishes the bend. I really want to emphasize that part and make sure that the highlight is sticking out nice and bright. All right, see what I mean by jumping around? So now I'm back up to that pocket. We're adding in that darker value I was talking about. So this is kind of emphasizing that that top part is seeing a lot less light. And then that bottom part, even though it has a little bit, it's catching a little bit of shadow, right? Um, it is still a little more within the light. So at around this point, you can start to see how I don't really need my line work anymore. Um, I'm going to turn my line work off at the end of this drawing, which we're coming up to in a few minutes here. But you, you, you want to start to feel that on your own too, that maybe your line work is no longer even showing or you're not relying on it to tell the story, right? So again, that's, that's where you know you're starting to figure out values. If you successfully have created a picture, a drawing, whatever it is, and you don't need line work, you don't have an outline, you don't see your sketch, whatever it is, you've successfully done a value study, a value drawing. You always wanna remember that line work is always gonna be like the illusion of showing value without adding deep value to your picture. So, you know, line work is always like the placeholder for art um, and it works absolutely perfectly in whatever you're doing. You're drawing cartoony, comic books, anything like that, you know, I'm not saying there's no place for line work. This is definitely a style that I do not use in my drawing, this hyper detailed value study, but it helps you to further understand the illustration process and how to give that illusion with just line work, understanding this will further your ability to do that. So something I like to do sometimes is check um, my picture from a distance. If you guys have never done that, I definitely suggest you do that. So on here, I can just kind of like, you know, shoot it back, zoom out, something like that. So if you're doing this in person, traditionally, just stand up, walk away from it, see what happens. All right, guys, from here, I'm basically done. You can see me turn my line work on and off, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this value in the background so that the pants stand off from it. So I just wanna say thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna make that dress video as a secondary video, so we'll see that coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video.